Yesterday, I already brought up all of our fall and Halloween decorations. It's September 4th. I don't know. Is that too early? Do you guys decorate this early? Hello, beautiful friends and book lovers. I hope that you're all doing well. If you're new here, my name is Heather and here at Heather's Book Review, I love to mainly read and review thrillers, but I feel like I'm actually reading a lot more genres this year because I feel like the vibe that I've been in this year is like, I'll listen to a thriller because I'm huge with audiobooks. I love, love, love audiobooks. So like, I'll listen to a thriller, I'll read a thriller, and then I've been like spicing it up a lot, you guys, with different genres. I'm actually really proud of myself because I feel like typically I've always just been like thriller after thriller after thriller. But now I've got quite a bit of different genres, but it's actually so funny because I'm going to be talking about six books today. And as I'm saying this, I'm pretty sure only one of them is not a thriller. <laughs> But I promise, you know what? Like I'm I'm literally reading a romance right now. Okay, so I have six books that I'm gonna talk about that I read slash listened to in the month of August. Um, two of them are four and a half stars, which is like pretty high for me. It takes a lot for me to give a book five stars. Um, so yeah, I had two books that I really like highly recommend. My biggest disappointment of the year I'm talking about in this video. So yeah, let's just go ahead and get started. The first book was actually a pleasant surprise. Um, it was a book of the month choice, and I've only ever read one other book from this author that I didn't love. I didn't even like it. Um, and that was The Night Swim by Megan Golden. But in the month of August, look at how nice Look at how nice it matches with this shirt. Didn't even do that on purpose, but you know what? I'll take it. In August, I read Dark Corners by Megan Golden. I actually really, really liked this. Um, this was a July Book of the Month pick. Um, if you're unfamiliar with Book of the Month, it is a book buying subscription um, where for $16.99, I think, is the new price. Um, you get to choose one hardcover book. And, you know, hardcovers typically retail anywhere from $25 to sometimes, like, up to $35. Like, this one retails for $29, um, but you get it for your Book of the Month credit. And then you can choose an add-on. So, all of these books that you see behind me with this little Book of the Month square, um, these are all books from Book of the Month. And then you can choose other books for only $10. So, you can get up to five books now. They used to only do three um, but you can get up to five books and all the all of your add-ons will only be $10. So it's my favorite way to get hardcover books because I think it's one of the cheaper routes to get newer hardcovers. But yeah, anyways, this was a July book of the month pick. And I was really hesitant because this is like a um like a true crime podcast kind of like thriller. Um, it stems from The Night Swim because that had like a vibe too. I actually think Rachel Crawl, um, yeah, it says Rachel Crawl, the true crime podcaster star of Megan Golden's acclaimed The Night Swim, which is the book I was saying I didn't really enjoy, returns to search for a popular influencer who disappears after visiting a suspected serial killer. I really liked this. I thought it was so fast paced. The chapters are really short, which you guys know I love because it's just like I don't know why it's just an incentive for me to like keep reading because the chapters are short I don't know like long chapters put me off a little bit but this was really good I loved the um like serial killer or I don't know is it a serial killer this was like my first book <clears throat> in August I like there's killer point of views in here okay and I really <clears throat> enjoyed those excuse me so I really enjoyed those. I just read another book too, where you get like the killer point of views. And like, I don't know, I always like that. Like those are the point of views that keep me on the edge of my seat. But on my rating scale, I am giving this an enjoyable read because I really actually did um, love it. And I did a buddy read with this with one of my bookish BFFs, which was always really fun. So yeah, it was a good read. Um, if you haven't gotten it from book of the month and you're looking for like a thriller 
add-on, I would choose this and add it to your next box. The last tangible book, guys, I listened. I listened to a lot of books in the month of August. The last tangible book is another book of the month book. And it was sitting, if you're new here, this bottom shelf that I'm pointing to is my current TBR shelf. So if you ever see any books on there and you're like, hello, can you please read that? Just let me know. Drop it in the comments. Um, I see a couple on there that are for sure reads for October. Um, spooky season. But this is a book that was sitting on that shelf since January. Another book of the month book. And that is Queen of Thieves by BZ Marsh. Look at this cover, by the way. I just, I'm going to be honest. I probably picked up this book because of this cover. I'm one of those girls. I really am. But this is um, me, you know, trying out different genres. This is a historical fiction. Um, just about, gosh, it's about a lot. Um, it's during the time when, I want to say it's, a, it's like right after World War II. It may even be during. I think it's like right after though. Um, and like, you know, people are working so hard just to get even like a little bit of money. None of the jobs are ideal. And you follow our main character who um, gets pregnant very quickly on in the book. And like her family is like, you know what, get out of the house. Like it's just chaos. And she's kind of looking for, um, looking into a line of work that can be like alarming and dangerous, but it's really like, she feels like her only route um, yeah, that's all I'm going to say. It's really, I really like this book. I gave it a four stars. Um, I can't quite give it a go get this book now, but it's like right up there on my rating skill. It is an enjoyable read, but like, just know it like, it's basically just missing the mark for like, go get this book now. But I really liked it. Um, I also like really enjoyed that the font is like a little bit bigger. You probably can't tell much on camera, but I don't know. That was just like a pleasant surprise for me. Um, sorry, my notes just all of a sudden went all wonky. So I'm going to fix that as I'm talking. But um, yeah, I really enjoyed this book. Um, it was definitely a nice little genre refresh for me. Um, so yeah, again, if you're looking for a genre switch up or maybe you like historical fiction a lot, I would get this one because I just... I don't know. It had me in my feels. All right, you guys, I'm just going to take a moment to talk about my biggest disappointment of the year. If you follow me on Bookstagram, Instagram, it's not a surprise to you. But you guys know Alice Feeney is my favorite author. She's still my favorite author, okay? But like, you guys need to understand. And I know you guys are probably the same way, especially with your favorite author. Like when she's coming out with a new book, it is literally all I look forward to in the book world, like until I can get my hands on that book. So her newest book, Good Bad Girl, um, I was given the opportunity to listen to um, courtesy of Macmillan Audio. Thank you so much, Macmillan Audio. Um, I felt like I won literally a lottery when I saw that I was given the opportunity to listen to this book. I'm not going to lie. I was like, holy shit. Really? Me? 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 Anyways, guys, I ended up giving it a two and a half star. Okay. On the rating scale, it's a decent but flawed. It just doesn't feel like an Alice Feeney book. Like she is known for her like psychological thrillers. Like she just, she just is like his and hers. Amazing. Rock, paper, scissors. Amazing. Daisy Darker. Amazing. I know I'm biased on this one, but I know who you are. One of my favorites by her. I think it's a great book. This is not a psychological thriller. It's not a bad book. It's just average. And it feels like I just like, it's like one of those random like audio book you know, you have an extra credit and you're like, okay, great. Like, you know, let me listen to this. Let me see what this is about. And you're just like, okay, yeah, it was whatever. Like, that's how I felt with it. And like, I don't even want to do a whole review on it. 
To be honest, I'd probably have to listen to it again because I wasn't taking any notes. I, but yeah, I just, I don't know. I wasn't taking any notes. I don't really have any desire to film like a dedicated review for it because I just was like so disappointed. So I don't know. If you guys want a review, let me know. I'm happy to re-listen to it. Um, if I still have the option, I don't know. It was from Macmillan through NetGalley, but it was like definitely over a month ago. So I'd still, I'd have to look. So I don't even know if I can. I don't know if I still have the opportunity to listen to it, but like, I just was bummed. I was just so bummed. It doesn't feel like a Feeny novel. It's not like a psychological thriller. It's more of like a family drama. And there are like some tw like twists in there, but like nothing was really like, <gasps> oh my god what like no it was just oh, I was just so bummed next up is a book that I was seeing all the hype for on bookstagram people were like oh my god it's so unique it's so special like read it um and that is strange Sally Diamond um it was good it was really good. I ended up giving it a four stars. Um, this is courtesy of Simon & Schuster Audio. Thank you so much, Simon & Schuster. You guys are amazing. Um, on my rating scale, I'm giving it an enjoyable read. Again, though, this is one that's like right up there with a go get this book now, but I'm going to tell you why it wasn't that for me. Okay, so I'm having a really hard time being able to categorize this book into a genre. I didn't look it up on um, Goodreads, so I can't tell you what like the first genre placement is for it, like the one that you see right when you click on the book. Um, I would say I'm sure a lot of people think it is a thriller um, because there are thriller elements in it for sure. But for me, I don't know. It's more of just like, I would say like a suspense drama. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's not like, not like that's bad. Um, I just don't know if it's very like thrilling. Um, but really we follow a main character named Sally Diamond and she, I think is in her forties. Um, and the way that she behaves, um, people don't necessarily agree with, especially in the time period that this book takes place. Um, I feel like it's kind of hard to give like a non-spoiler review for Sally Diamond, but basically, um, you find out a, a lot about Sally's past and, uh, basically like where she came from and it is not a book for the faint of heart. I will say too, like there are, the book is disturbing and there is some crazy like imagery in it. I will also add to I am I get more like sensitive like being pregnant reading these books. I'm just like ugh, I don't know. Like it just I was the same way when I was pregnant with my son. I'll never forget it. I read Jar of Hearts by Jennifer Hillier and I was like ugh, I just couldn't like stomach it. And typically I'm not like that. Like I mainly read thrillers. Like it, it doesn't really bother me, but this book there was like there's just some very vivid scenes regarding a pregnant woman and like those were really hard to read and there's quite a lot of them so just go into it knowing that um it's good I think it's a wonderful story about our main character I think we see a lot of growth for her throughout the story um but all in all it's a sad story so I would say so just like know that it's good though I understand why people are like oh my gosh, read it. Um, yeah, I loved reading the story through Sally's point of view. Um, so yeah, it's good, but like definitely has triggering moments for sure. Guys, this next book, sorry, I'm scrolling down here a second, is one of the books that I have become the most excited for this year. Like it was just such a sweet surprise. Another massive thank you to Simon & Schuster Audio. Thank you because you've introduced me to it yet again. Another one of my favorite books of the year. Guys, it's a go get this book now on the rating scale. Four and a half stars. So close to a five. So close. Like it may even be like a 4.75. Okay. Star. 
And that is The Last One by Will Dean. This is a survival thriller, which honestly, you guys, I think that's my new jam. I really think survival eh, survival thrillers are my new jam for sure. Like if you follow me on Instagram, my husband and I have been watching a bunch of like survival thriller movies lately. Like, I don't know. I'm just into it right now. And the last one, it's so good. It's about this woman who gets on a cruise. Okay, this is not a spoiler. It happens like right away. I'm probably sure it's in the book synopsis. She gets on a cruise ship with this guy that she's seeing and she wakes up the next day and nobody is on the cruise ship. It's just her on this cruise ship, this massive cruise ship. Okay. And like, just think, especially if you've been on a cruise, like think of how eerie that would be. Even if you've never been on a cruise, you guys know, you guys know how big those ships are. Like imagine waking up and it's just you and you're like, where the fuck is everybody? It is so good. It is a fast paced book. Oh my gosh. I cannot say it enough. I had so much fun reading it. So much fun. I just loved it. And I thought the ending, like the last couple sentences, I was like, shut the front door. Like it's literally, I can't stop smiling over it. It's so good. Go get it now. I swear you will be like, this is insane. It's insane. Like, I feel like it's nothing like I've ever read or listened to before. It is a fun, fun, fun survival thriller. I think I saved the last two books, the one that I just talked about, the last one. And now this one, I saved the best for last because this is another four and a half star and go get this book now. And that is The Drowning Woman. You guys. This was all over, all over Bookstagram. And I'm like, okay, I feel like that's when I really start to get excited is when people are talking about a psychological thriller and it's like everyone's either like four or five, four or five, four or five stars. Like no one's really like, eh, it was just okay. I'm like, all right, like I'm getting it. I did that for The Drowning Woman and then I've yet to read or listen to this yet, but I'm going to probably in the month of September um, The Quiet Tenant, I'll put a still of that here somewhere. Those are the two books I feel like I've seen the biggest thriller hype for, at least in the past couple months. Um, but anyways, The Drowning Woman, I would consider this a psychological thriller because you do not know who to trust. And you're like, what the heck is going on? Like, oh my gosh, I thought it was a great Audible listen. Um, I... Guys, I actually canceled my Audible membership because I just don't use it anymore. I feel like most of the books that I do listen to are on um, are through Libro FM. So anyways, I had like seven credits and I was like, you know what? I'll get The Drowning Woman and I'll get The Quiet Tenant because those are books that I've been eyeing. Um, but anyways, I think it was a wonderful audiobook for sure. Um, and I'm sure my experience like physically reading it would have been the same, but huh, it's really good. It's like you follow these two, two point of views, um, two different women. And yeah, I mean, one of them, like basically one of the women saves the other one from like trying to drown herself, hence the title. And then once she saves her, their lives are like intertwined and you're like, what the heck? What route is this book going? Like, it's so good. And I will say the amount of twists in this book, they're like, they're not even outrageous. There's just a lot of them. And you're like, oh, okay. Like, I didn't see that coming. It's one of those books where it's just like one after the other. And you're like, oh my gosh, this is so good. So yeah, that wraps up the six books that I read and listened to in the month of August. I'm so excited for September. It is September 4th right now and I'm fi uh, filming this and I've finished, I just finished a thriller yesterday. It was pretty good and I'm reading a romance right now and I'm just like obsessed with it. I love it. So yeah, I'm really excited and especially because I think that I'm going to listen to The Quiet Tenant in September too. It's going to be a good reading month. But anyways, thank you so much for watching and please leave in the comments below what you read in the month of August, some of your favorite books this year, what you're reading in September, because I love to chat with you guys. So 
As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye you guys.